One of the most fascinating works I've come across in the last few decades of research was a book titled Thunderbolts of the Gods. In it, authors David Talbot and Walter Thornhill made a solid case for the different alignment of the planets in ancient times, an alignment that allowed the ancient civilizations to see cosmic events with their naked eye. More so, they captured the events in rock art, rock art that we have overlooked as primitive when, in fact, it's giving us a fascinating history of Earth's past. David Talbot, Talbot is here today to share his findings on this, and I have. I've looked forward to meeting you for a long time, as we found out everybody at Guyham's been looking forward to your Very arrival. Very glad to be here. When you start adding the newer uh, technology, cosmological technology, Hubble and the like, where we're now able to actually glimpse into, through well, through a lens, but glimpse into the phenomena that's out there that we are no longer able to see with our naked eye. It's validating the rock art. Well, uh, and you asked me about the cosmic thunderbolt, and I should have actually, oh, this, this I should have drawn that to a decisive point in yes, the history okay, of the research. Okay, let me give you this. This is out of your book. Yeah. It is the thunderbolt that steers the universe. We have a beautiful image of this. Now, let's talk about that. Indeed. The cosmic thunderbolt was, for me, my bridge to the research of Wal Thornhill, who is the premier investigator uh -huh. within the Electric Universe community. There are many others, but Wal Thornhill came to Portland, Oregon, late in 1996, and he had seen these reconstructions of my own. And he was so convinced of uh, the meaning of that reconstruction that he stayed in my office for 30 days to persuade me that these were electric discharge phenomena, his specialty. And I was completely persuaded. For this reason, once it became clear to me that the mythic thunderbolt in the antique world was a bridge between the electric universe and my own work, we had the most natural convergence between us. So Thunderbolts of the Gods actually gives us a point of common discussion because, as you said, the Hubble telescope and other telescopes are now looking out across the entire electromagnetic spectrum and they're seeing uh -huh. spectacular events in the sky and guess what? They reveal similarities to the cosmic thunderbolt. Yes. And this is well worth investigating because, I mean, I can tell you no one historically wondering about what was acting on human imagination ever, ever uh -huh. even dreamt of something electrical in the sky. Yet once you point it out. Actually inspiring these images. And then yeah. once, it's, once it's, it's open for discussion, everybody can see it. And that's what we're experiencing exactly. right now. There's that's a, what a your sense work of, is so yeah, beautiful. There's this sense now mm -hmm. of a spectacular unification of thought now about the origins of, of human uh, religions, institutional interpretations of things that have made no sense to us, all of the ritual practices, the magical practices, the superstitions, the rock art, as you said, all the great artistic motifs that dominated the early phases of human history, the beginnings of languages and pictographs that are inseparable from that art, those artistic traditions. Mm -hmm. The, the, the pictographs evolving into abstractions that become alphabets and so on. Mm -hmm. This is just such an interesting field because in the points of agreement between all of the ancient cultures, there are certain forms that stand out. Now one, for example, is this stupendous wheel turning in the sky. Yes. Just a wheel yes. in the sky and an axle of the wheel and spokes that are the extension of a star that the, is the hub of the wheel with the axle in the center of it. I mean, just describing it in words, many people who are familiar with ancient art, they'll say, oh yeah, well that is it. There's, there's the wheel, the rim of the wheel, the axles, there's the hub, and then there's the axle. But did you know that the axle was identified as the warrior hero? Well, what does that mean? The moment you recognize that, you have libraries of evidence that are opening up to you. And then you hear that, well, that star was identified as the planet Venus. Yes. And you see there are these streamers that 
that actually are suggestive of electric discharge. There's a symmetry to them and there is symmetry to electric discharge activity. What, what was happening to the planet Venus that identified it as the hub and the spokes of this spectacular mm -hmm. turning wheel in the sky? And, and then you begin to notice, well, this, this wasn't just an esoteric thought mm -mm. that occurred to them. They were building temples and cities and they were using this wheel as the model for them. These were the wheel cities and so on. So all of this monumental activity, which was fundamentally commemorative, mm -hmm. a monument is a commemoration mm -hmm. of something. And we just draw blanks when we look back at this stuff. There's a, we don't see commemoration of anything no, meaningful. No, not at all. It just looks like primitive art. And, and, and partially because even as children, what are the, some of the most common things we draw? It would be a sun, a sun yeah, like a spoked wheel. It yeah, would be little yeah. five-pointed stars. These are the most natural expressions globally of children around the world that, that we start drawing as soon as we're able to hold our pencils in our hands. This is, this is a, in the area of more speculation, lower level of confidence than the reconstruction itself, but there's evidence that the events and the formations in the sky that were experienced persisted in human, in the human psyche as subconscious strata. I mean, this is what Carl Jung was saying, but he never wondered what, where did these archetypes come from? Mm -hmm. but, but we're simply saying, hey, extraordinary natural events provoked an out outpouring of human imagination. And those are the mythic archetypes. Well, and as above, so below. Exactly. You cannot disconnect our electrical matrix with the cosmos. There must be much more to that connectivity than we've even dreamt of. Velikovsky's hypothesis about the origins of humankind rocked your world. Now, let's just set this conversation up with why. Well. At the core of Velikovsky's work, I mean, this was the culminating work really in his life, was the idea that the planetary system that we know today is new. Planets haven't always moved on these courses. Science has been saying with full confidence that the planets have always moved on these courses. Everything's fixed. So science as a whole did not take kindly to Velikovsky's pronouncement that the planet Venus was new and that it was formerly a comet and it was devastating in its impact on all of humanity. And, and to say this, he committed a crime. He used ancient myths and legends and primitive astronomical accounts to verify the claimed role of Venus as a world-threatening comet, and that was not permissible. And so Velikovsky not only saw his number one bestseller dropped by the publisher, Macmillan, but it, this was a very distinguished scientist, a colleague of Sigmund Freud, Freud and of Albert Einstein, for example, uh, who lost all of his credibility in the eyes of mainstream scientists. Mm -hmm. And that's a story unto itself, the devastating impact that had on Velikovsky personally. But the space age fortunately followed the uh, publication of Worlds in Collision. Yes. And the thing about facts coming <laughs> back to us from space is that they didn't lend any veracity to the ideas that were used against Velikovsky. I mean, this is just the historic record. Mm -hmm. We can no more say that planets have always moved on the same courses as they do today. I mean, all of the historical evidence now, as we begin to actually look at it systematically and logically, rationally, the evidence says that civilization as a whole emerged out of wholesale catastrophe, that was more on their minds day and, this and is night. In the mythology it's all of, in the mythology, uh, it, the, and, yes. it, and mythology has an explanation in concrete experiences, concrete forms in the sky, concrete sequences uh, of events, and all we need to do is pose the question. That's my message in a nutshell. We just pose the question. 
because Velikovsky forged a path for us with his claims about the planet Venus. He noticed that different cultures were using different words and different symbols, but they were all within the context of these cultures, symbols and words for comets. Yes, and this that, is really your work and what you're looking for is to find the consistency between these this global imagery and these global stories. And you're saying science really has been foolish to totally dismiss these these consistencies throughout our history and throughout our religions and cultures. But we can, I think, be sympathetic with that mistake. There's a fundamental error of perception, but we can appreciate it in one sense. It's all absurd. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> just consider the absurdities of the ancient myth. I mean, the absurdity of a dragon attacking a village. Yes. Follow that absurdity backwards and you get to a much bigger absurdity. That dragon was actually attacking the world. The world is progressively reduced by storytelling, that archaic world. Yes. So now this is our our village was attacked by this dragon and, and what, it carried the, off the princess. But and cosmologically, what was the dragon? It was the, this huge and terrifying form of the comet Venus. Yes. Now, I'm oversimplifying everything here because there was a dynamic relationship between uh, plasma phenomena centered on Venus mm -hmm. and a connection to the planet Mars. This, you have to get into the reconstruction a bit to see that that is so. But Venus was the mother of all comets. Now, Terrifying what, in the sky. Terrifying in everything that the, the ancient peoples ever said about comets. Mm -hmm. It was planted in their minds by the great comet, Venus. Mm -hmm. So a comet appears into view, oh my God, the world is going to come to an end. Well, well that's... But that's a, collective memory. It's on collective some memory. Me yes. Exactly. Exactly so. It, it, it's every culture was influenced by the same human experience, and mm -hmm. Venus was a comet. Mm -hmm. So Venus was a comet, and the imagery that conditioned all of our doomsday fears about comets can be traced right back to the great comet. And and when they say the comet appears in the sky and the king is going to die, the kingdom is going to fall. I, I mean, that's the story yes. of the great comet, and it was Venus, the eye, heart, and soul of this stupendous power and it was that global. Velikovsky identified yeah. as, as Saturn. So these mm -hmm. planets are inseparably connected to each other. You can't take a myth about the warrior hero, identify it with Mars, and stop there. No, you have to see the warrior hero was the consort of the goddess who was Venus. The Venus was, a, the, the, the goddess Venus was originally the eye, heart, and soul of a universal sovereign figure, a towering form in the sky, identified as the primeval sun ruling before the present sun. Now this is a global That's convergence right. of myth and the planets cannot be separated from each other. That's the heart of it. You're showing how the cosmos is, has been reflected throughout history and there is cross-cultural agreement as you say and that's, that is critical to giving credence to this story again. That's key and the the process of, of reasoning from evidence can be spelled out in detail and following the, the protocol for drawing reliable conclusions from unreliable witnesses, mm -hmm. just like a detective would do. You right. know how a detective right, would right. say, well, you know, they're not all saying the same thing, but you know, they all, th four, all five, all ten said this, it's very specific, that can't be false. They weren't talking to each other. Now, the early cultures weren't talking to each other either, so highly concrete points of uh, agreement. Just, uh, for example, the, the warrior hero descends to the underworld, and it's in connection with the formation of a great cosmic mountain or, or world pillar rising along the world axis. Well, that's so specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that doesn't have a reason, a cause, then something just isn't adding up exactly. at all. It has to have a cause because the evidence, the stories are there. Yeah. And they couldn't be there by accident.